Look at that. <laughs> Hello. Hello and welcome back. Now you guys know that we love to test kitchen gadgets here at Sorted. And today, Drio have sent us one of their chef makers. We think it's pretty interesting. They had to send it to us because it, it literally doesn't exist. It's a prototype, it's a Kickstarter, which means we're some of the first to get our hands on it and you guys will be some of the first to see it. Myself and the food team have had a play for a couple of weeks and we think it's definitely worth recording something as we experiment with it. But today we're gonna to put it in the hands of two of our normal home cooks. The question is, is it really a chef maker? Or oh, chef man. Mm. That's different. Probe? Yeah, but also... Detachable. Detachable probe. Oh, well, that's already a problem for me because I'm gonna lose that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a lot like an air fryer. This is different. This is very different, as is this bit. The water tank. Which is where you put water in at the top. Well, Spaff, let me tell you some of these claims. The chef mode, Drio say, is powered by CombiCook technology, which basically combines convection heating, the water tank and the temperature probe. These are then applied automatically to the ingredient presets, which Drio have had programmed by master chefs. The individual functions can also be used independently or together depending on what you're wanting to cook and seem pretty customizable. If this is going to make our chefs, we've just got to get on with it. Let's put them out of the job. Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to test four recipes, starting with something that I struggle to get right at home. Salmon. Oh, it could have been one of anything. Oh, shut <laughs> your mouth. <laughs> so we're going to use the chef mode. It has inbuilt settings for perfect salmon. Using the temperature probe, salmon steak. Salmon steak. That's what we got. 25 to 35 minutes. Probe and water required. Yes. That way? Like, like that. That is the thickest part. Water tank, fill that up to the max line. It is achieving doneness. That's my type of language. <laughs> 33 minutes away from doneness. What, what do you mean by doneness? What are we looking for? I would say crispy skin, but this is the bit that I struggle with. When I cut into it, I want that almost pinkness still in the middle. Blush. Blush. That's Blush. And I can't really get that, and that's ability. Well, it's that knowledge between how you get the blushness on the inside and the crispy skin. And still ensure that it's cooked. <laughs> yeah, and oily fish gives you a bit more of a kind of leniency for that really succulent, juicy fish when you bite into it. But even salmon, and especially a fish like that, in order to get the crispy, you don't want to overcook the outside. So in theory, this is going to help. So I've also connected the chef maker to an app on my phone. Um, there's a ton of recipe. What's actually, what's really interesting is when they first sent this to us, the app existed, but there were no recipes on it. And over the weekend, there has now been a ton of recipes added to it, of which the salmon is one. Do you think they're worried about us testing it? They're trying Maybe. to impress us by populating the app. <laughs> they definitely don't care. <laughs> what has been fascinating is we've had a direct line to their R&D team, and they are as interested in us testing it as we are about what it can do. Like, it is it's it is brand new. We're gonna serve these with Jersey Royals, yes. already cooked, wild garlic. We've got a smoked oil through some yogurt, uh, some asparagus tips, lots of deliciousness on a plate. Chuck, chuck some oil in that. Smoky yogurt, whoa! Right, get the garlic in there? Yeah. Good seasoning, good smokiness. More oil. Oh, nice. Mm. Look at us. A squeeze of lemon would be good, actually. Well held. Yes, chef. We could do this in like a circle, couldn't we? It would like a bed, like a bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A circle, yeah. a disc. Yeah. Yeah, just smush that on. Let's just get it going. Yeah, this is, this is good. And then some salmon on top. Right, it's go time, mate. Wow, okay, so we got crispy skin, Whoa, mate. Oh, that is crispy skin. Probe out. Does it sound crispy? Really crispy. It's impressive. Oh, <gasps> we got the blush. Got the blush right in the middle. We got the juices as well. You can also see how it's gonna flake beautifully, but what you haven't got is those white bits that seep out of fish if you overcook it, and that's the proteins overcooking. Yes, yes, yes. Service. Chefed it. Wait, Jay, Jay. Oh, oh chefy. Now we've chefed it. Oh, so chefy. Mm. 
less is more. Yeah. It's simple, but each bit is done, hopefully, really nicely. Uh, and the plating? Chef I, well, I think it looks good. I think it looks great. Well, straight off, the salmon skin shatters like glass. The fact that that was plug it in and leave it to do its thing, that's great results. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Dish one, tick. That couldn't have been any easier. It was pretty straightforward. If we tried. But how about we do some more off-piste stuff? Oh, off piste. Someone's been skiing lately. Pro mode. <laughs> that wasn't skiing. <laughs> Test number two. Sorry, I was looking at Kush and his sexy bum. <laughs> Test number two. Slow roasting tough cuts of meat. We've got pork belly. Mm. We want the meat to be tender as anything, but we want the skin to be crackling as everything. Yeah, lovely and crispy. When we got it, we chucked it in the fridge uncovered, so it's dried out some of the skin to give us a bit of a head start. We're gonna serve this with an udon noodle miso broth. So, exciting times, but we are gonna use the precision element of the cooker to see if we can hit that exact mm. temperature to get those two elements of cooking, the succulence in the middle, but the crispiness on the top. And we are gonna to defer to Ebers, who is a chef, for those precise temperatures. So it's going to use the same technology as before, except this time you're manual. So where the combi cook is preloaded here, we specifically want a probe temperature of 82 degrees, but we're going to cook it to that with an ambient temperature in the oven of 120. Because if you go too high, you dry it out, but you want it high enough to get to there without taking forever. Mm. Yeah. So we're using the grate. So spaff. We're going probe cook. Yes. We're going 82 degrees for the target probe temp. Good temperature for pork belly. So what other ways could we do this at home? Because I think I could do something similar on my barbecue, but that's because it's got the probe and I can set the temperature and it's, it's already another piece of technology. You do it exactly the same way. You could set your oven to 120 and then cook your pork belly until the middle reaches 82. But most ovens wouldn't have that built in probe. You haven't got that accuracy. You have to keep taking it out and checking it. Plus this has got the water tank. So you have that added security. Right, it's been just over an hour. We finished with, oh, look at that. Ooh. It's already actually started blistering. Okay, so now we're gonna put it on air fryer and we're gonna whack it right up high to 230 for 10 minutes to really crisp up that skin. Whilst the crackling crisps, we're gonna add some boiling water to our udon noodles and our bok choy. Bok choy, well remembered. <laughs> Couple of tablespoons of red miso, stir it all together and we've got a delicious noodly broth. Mm. That was one ingredient. I know. Oh yeah, look at that. I reckon that's done. Reckon that's done? Reckon that's done, done. Well have a look, pull it out. You can always have a little scratch scratch. Oh. Don't let ever see, but listen to this. Sounds pretty good to me. Ready, yeah, Spaff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> Hello. I would not kick that out of bed in the morning. Look at that. <laughs> Hello. This on its own, Cantonese style, is one of my favourites. I think with that simple but delicious miso broth, I'm kind of excited. It's not melt in the mouth. It's got that nice bounce of pork belly that you absolutely want. But you can see how perfectly crispy the skin is. It's like honeycomb. Mm. It's and this pork is ideal. Pork belly is a cut we've used on the channel so many times, and we've done dozens of videos with pork belly. I don't think in 13 years, on the channel, we've had it like this. How good is that Do miso broth? Good quality miso into boiling water with udon and Don't greens. belittle it. We made that and <laughs> no. it's excellent. I Chef. would never belittle it because it's as simple as that and you don't need to mess with it. It just works. Test number three. Are we doing pork belly again? <laughs> <laughs> if you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. Like the video. Subscribe if you aren't. Click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. Doesn't get much more chefy than this. Test number three, delicate meats mm. that you want to cook properly because they cost a lot of money and you don't want to throw 
your money down the toilet. This is about 15 quid's worth of lamb ribs here. A lovely rack. The way that I'd know how to cook this, I'd know, is sous vide, because you want to get it up to the right temperature, which is- worth, hold it there. Hold it there, and then you take it out and you fry it really quickly so that you- Render all, render the, fat. all the fat on the skin. Yep, or in restaurants it may be traditionally cooked uh, sort of fat side down in a pan and then finished off roasted in the oven. But you've got to know what you're looking for and you've got to know when and what temperatures. So you don't overcook it because that eye of meat is pretty small and will overcook if you don't get it right. So we're going to use the probe function again. We're looking for 46 degrees Celsius. That is going to be on the rare side for sure. And then we're going to use the broil function to render all the fat on top and hopefully not overcook the centre. So the ambient temperature is... 65 degrees. That's only sort of 20 degrees-ish higher than the core temperature you're aiming for. So it will take a while to get there, but in doing so, it won't overcook what is quite a small eye of muscle meat. And then we're going to broil. It's finished. It's been an hour. An hour. We're going to turn it onto the broil setting and render all that fat. So at the moment, very, very, very rare. But because we're now going to crisp up that skin, you have a chance for that extreme heat to bring the internal temperature up to a nice pink. So going up right high, 230 degrees. For eight minutes. To accompany oh. our lamb. We're going to whack it on a board, rustic style. We've got some pan-fried fennel. We've got some romesco. Oh. Uh, some sultanas. They've been rehydrated in chicken stock. Oh my goodness, they are incredible. They are so good. Chicken fruit. <laughs> and some, oh, what's this? Black olive crumb. Oh yeah. I feel like we could definitely smear that. Oh, you want to smear that? Fine. It's fine, I want to watch you smear that. Lovely. Step one. Well done. And then would you want to do some like fennel here and here, and then we'll just have the lamb in the middle. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Finished. Finished. Oh, mate. Oh. Whack it on the board, and we'll give it a chance to rest and get that temperature equalisation, by which time the middle should be a perfect pink. <laughs> Such teamwork, boys. Such teamwork. Well done. Oh, this is going to look so good on our board. Ooh. Nice colour on the outside. A few resting juices on the board and inside. There are a lot of nodding chefs behind the camera. Sorted. What do you think, Ebers? Even from the sidelines, excited, because it's the right colour, it still had that scratchy fat and it smells great. I'm excited. That is so tender. And that is what you expect of this cut of lamb, if it's cooked properly. And the fact is, this has been. You've got that nice rinse fat on top. You've got the eye of meat there, which is super succulent. Damn good. I think what fascinates me with this is I wouldn't think twice if that was served up to me and I was paying $29.99 a plate in a big restaurant. Because that's what you expect of quality cooking. And plating. We're not done yet. It's time for two normals to have a silly idea. <laughs> Question is, can you be pastry chef makers too? Test number four. We're now gonna be made pastry chef. <laughs> Pano chocolat, bread and butter pudding, tiramisu <laughs> creme brulee. Yeah, you heard it here first and probably for the last time. But here's why we're doing it. Because we know with a creme brulee, you need a custard that doesn't scramble. So you need a stable temperature to be able to cook that custard at. Plus, you then want a nice crispy caramelised top. top. Caramelised top. So, let's see if we can do it. So we're basically ripping up pan au chocolates into what, a bowl. What was the first thing that we had to do? The first thing to do is to whisk all of our custard ingredients together, and then we drop. Oh yeah, I was going to do that in there. You can lead a chef to the water, but you can't make him good. So this is all the best things about bread and butter pudding, i.e. custard and stale bread. Those pan au chocolat are a couple of days old. Tiramisu, because you've got the coffee and alcohol combo with the chocolate from the pan au chocolat. Creme brulee, that combination of custard and crispy top. It's heaven. Sugar, Kahlua. Milk. Double cream. A little bit of double cream. Mm -hmm. And just the yolks. Do you know? Three right, egg wait, yolks. Do you know how you're going to separate them? Just like, like this. Right. Like that. Right. 
No, this is the way that I was taught at pastry school. Boop. We should probably stress, this machine comes with lots of preloaded combi cook functions and lots of tried and tested recipes. This is not one of them. This is you guys just yeah, well, fusing you know. as many things together as possible. Right, so what you're doing there, yeah. Now you keep going, I'm like a Roomba. <laughs> happy? Happy. You're never happy. No! No! <laughs> are, you, are you winding us up? Or? There's more surface area, so in and then back in. I do wonder sometimes if you do it just to test out nerves. No. <laughs> this can't not work. How much? Four tablespoons. To the thickest part. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Probe at 65, ambient at 100. Okay, <laughs> probe out. It looks interesting. It does look interesting. Good. Careful. And now for the brulee part of the creme brulee tiramisu bread and butter pudding with Kahlua. Ambient, 230. You'll want to probably keep checking this one and put the light on as well occasionally to peer in because you want good colour on it, but you don't want to burn that sugar. It's still there. <laughs> for me, that's like an air fryer plus, plus, plus. Like that probe is game changing. Because mm. suddenly that now makes it a precision tool rather than an air fryer of I'm going to leave it in there for about 8 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Well regardless of how this one turns out, I like it. I'm more likely to use the chef mode because if the other inbuilt recipes work as well as the salmon, that's going to fix a lot of issues for me and it's very, very simple and I love that. I think the other convenience of the air fryers and the other bits, I don't use an air fryer at home yet, but those things I think are more akin to like sort of home evening cooking. Yeah. But you've also got the inbuilt project cooks. But actually, are they project cooks when they're that simple? I might get it open just to see. We don't want to brown this and potentially ruin it. Oh! That is a brulee. Brulee. How do we get it out? <laughs> I don't know. We know it's going to taste good, so I'm going to preemptively. Yes. Well done. <laughs> This is one of those ones you whack in the middle of the table and you let everyone just take a big dollop for themselves. Whack it. It's in the middle of the table. Yes. The one sexy shot we wanted. What, what have you done? done? What do you mean, what have I done? That's what is you, that what you're after? That's what you're after. You need to crack it in two no, places. No, but you've left all the sugar here. Yeah, well, no, maybe I need to crack it in three no, places. No, you step away. Oh, it's good custard underneath, boys. That's what you want. This is filth. It's not, <laughs> a, it's not a looker on a plate. But what we're looking for is that custard wobble Give that is some. held together with the structure of the pastry, the pan au chocolat, but a perfectly cooked custard. Cheers. 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 Well done, us. Well done, us. That's outstanding. That's so naughty. The middle Ooh. is just like mm, custard. I could see off an entire one of those. Keep it over there. Price is almost irrelevant. The point is it does something. It delivers on what it does. And you two have cooked a rack of lamb perfectly. Evers, we and this, that. And the pork, <laughs> the best you've ever done. And salmon, buanqui, buanqui, But You're welcome. I think what Kush said was he already has all of those temperatures. Yeah. Pretty much every protein just in his head. Weirdo. So he can just plug it into the machine, set exact temperatures and away it goes. And then you just leave it and it does its thing. That part of it is really good. The fact that it's got the preloaded stuff and the recipes and the inspiration. And for me, the interesting point is how compact it is. Mm. So how quick and compact and neat and tidy and accurate it is. That part of it opens up so many opportunities. Well, I think that's a massive thank you to Drio for trusting us with one of their prototypes. <laughs> they might regret it now that we've done the review. <laughs> that, this is going to be on the app soon. I know. Yeah. <laughs> And if the idea of the machine has piqued your interest, you can check it out with all the rest of the details on their Kickstarter page. Links are down below. And if you're quick enough, there's also an early bird discount on the price. Beep, beep.